Hello, everyone, and welcome to worship. My name is Nick Price, and I'm the site pastor here at Trinity Kimberly Way. And I want to extend a special word of welcome to those of you who might be tuning in for the very first time. We are so glad that you've joined us. You'll notice something in the chat bar, a little button has popped up inviting you to connect with us. And that just takes you to our digital connect card and you can let us know a little bit about yourself, how you got connected, and how we can be supporting you in taking your next step. Whether that's simply by praying for you or helping you get connected to what's going on here at Trinity. But we also want to say, happy 4th of July. The 4th of July is this holiday in which we celebrate the freedoms that we have within this country. We celebrate our founding as a nation. But it's also an invitation to remember the principles upon which we were founded. To go back to those words from the Declaration of Independence in which we declared boldly, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights among them being life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We remember those truths because those are truths that we are still learning how to live up to as a country. Fourth of July is an opportunity to go back and rededicate ourselves to the fact that we are indeed a nation of laws, but a nation which believes in the dignity of all people. We celebrate the fact that we are a nation of many different peoples, many different cultures, many different, uh, many different ethnic groups. It is a time of celebrating that fact. And as a result, I think it's a good time for us to reflect as Christians upon our identity as well. Because if that's true for our country, how much truer is that for us who are called by the name of Jesus? Though many people, we are one through the blood of Jesus Christ. We are one family, a family that spans cultures and countries, a family that spans centuries. And so throughout our worship this weekend, we're going to be celebrating that fact by singing hymns that come to us from believers from around the world as a way of celebrating that we are truly one through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so as we come into worship together, we want to begin by first confessing what it is we believe about God. And so I invite you to join me as we open in a word of prayer. We worship today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. We want to continue in an attitude of praise, singing together all you works of God, bless the Lord. Let's sing this hymn as a family of faith.
continue praising God by joining in responsive reading of Psalm 19. The heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies display his craftsmanship. Day after day they continue to speak. Night after night they make him known. They speak without a sound or word. Their voice is never heard. Yet their message has gone throughout the earth and their words to all the world. The instructions of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The commandments of the Lord are right, bringing joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are clear, giving insight for living. Reverence for the Lord is pure, lasting forever. The laws of the Lord are true, each one is fair. Well, having begun in an attitude of praise, we want to come before God now in an attitude of confession. One of the beautiful things about confession is first, it reminds us that in this family of faith, it's okay to not be okay. We all fall short, we all make mistakes, but we are still welcome here in God's presence. Furthermore, what we find is that when we come before God in confession, he always responds with words of grace and forgiveness. It's a reminder that we are deeply loved by our God. So I invite you to join me as we confess together. The commands of the Lord are indeed meant to bring joy to our hearts. They were given in his tender mercy to guide us into right relationship with him and with our neighbors. And so today we focus on the fourth commandment. Let us recite it together. Honor your father and your mother. And what does this mean? Well, we should fear and love God so that we do not despise or anger our parents and other authorities, but honor them, serve and obey them, love and cherish them. Well, let us now examine our hearts as we reflect on this commandment, confessing our rebellion and disobedience and asking for God's mercy and forgiveness. Take a moment now for silent confession. And I invite you to pray with me. Heavenly Father, we have not been the people you call us to be. Hear our confession. Gracious Lord, we confess that we have not always loved your commands or followed them. We have sinned against you and one another in our thoughts, in our words, and in our actions. We have failed to honor and respect those you have placed in authority over us, just as we have failed to honor and respect you, our Heavenly Father. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we walk in your ways and bring glory to you. Amen. Well, hear and rejoice in God's words of forgiveness. The Lord is compassionate and merciful, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. He will not constantly accuse us nor remain angry forever. He does not punish us for all our sins. He does not deal harshly with us as we deserve. For his unfailing love toward those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. He has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. The Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Well, in response to those words of grace and mercy, let us sing our hymn of praise, Children of the Heavenly Father.
The gift of God's word comes from the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 1 to 4. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Welcome to another week in our series called The Tender Commandments. And again, we call it the Tender Commandments because we want to recognize that these Ten Commandments aren't um, arbitrary rules that God has given us or hoops we have to jump through to prove to Him that we love Him. But instead, they are gifts from God to help us understand the best way to live our lives. Now, this week, our commandment is this one. Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. We're to honor our parents, and in so doing, God says, it will actually make our life better. It will make our life last longer. Let's bow our heads and let's pray. Lord God, I pray that the words I'm about to speak and the thoughts that we think as we meditate on your word for us, Lord, I pray that that would all be truly acceptable in your sight. Amen. Now, do you do this? I, I know I do. When someone gives me a present, whether that's at Christmas time or my birthday or, or some other time, one of the first things I do is I, I kind of feel it, and if it's heavy, I get a little more excited. Is that true? Do you think that, that if that package is a little heavier, it means maybe it's more important or it's more valuable or it's something a little cooler? For some reason, we, we think that the heaviness makes a difference. Now, Sometimes we get surprised. Something light can be an amazing gift or something heavy may not be worth that much. But, but I think you probably do that too. I know I do. I remember one time when our son Christian was little, you know, at Christmas time, we'd give him clothes and it was like, he didn't want clothes. You know, he wanted to get to the toys, right? Um, and one time there was a box and it didn't have socks in it. And I knew he was going to go clothes, right? Um, and he'd be able to tell right away that it was clothes. So I put something heavy in there. So uh, when he, he thought, oh, this is going to be cool, and he opened it up, he's like, socks? Sometimes that heaviness communicates something important. And that's interesting because this commandment, honor your father and your mother, the word honor that is used at the beginning of this commandment literally at its simplest meaning means heavy. In other words, first and foremost, children, and I know that everybody I'm speaking to is a child, right? If you're somebody's child, you're somebody's son or daughter, um, you may be a grown-up kid, but you're still somebody's kid, that, that what the Bible is telling us is that we are to treat our parents as if they are heavy. Now, I don't mean physically heavy. As if they're important, as if they're valued in our lives. Here's a, another way to think of this. Uh, watch this. Looks like a great movie, doesn't it? Comes out later this year, hopefully. Um, but Aretha Franklin kind of coined that phrase, didn't she? R-E-S-P-E-C-T, respect. Another way to describe that word honor, define that word honor, is this idea of respect. God tells us that as children, he has given us the gift of parents, and as children, we have a role to, to play in that relationship, and our role is that first and foremost, we are to treat our parents with respect. We're to respect them. Now, the word respect is defined in the dictionary this way, a feeling of deep admiration for someone or something elicited by their abilities, qualities, or achievements. Two things about that. First of all, we are to have this feeling for our parents, and I would argue put that feeling into practice, into action, that demonstrates we have a deep admiration for our parents. And now notice this, in the definition it says the reason you have this deep admiration is because of their abilities, qualities, or achievements. In other words, the thing they've 
things they've accomplished or the, the, the things that they are capable of doing or the, the qualities that they exhibit as a person. And, and because of those things, we're supposed to respect them. But what the Bible says, what this commandment teaches is that we don't respect our parents because they're great parents. We don't respect them because of their achievements in life or the abilities that they've demonstrated. We respect them simply because they're our parent. They may not have a lot of great abilities or qualities. They may not have achieved anything in life. It doesn't matter. The one thing they've achieved, God says, that makes them worthy of our respect and honor is they brought us into this world. They're our parents. And because they're our parents, we owe them our respect. Now, one of the ways we've been kind of putting some further definition on these commandments is we've used this little book called The Small Catechism that was written by Dr. Martin Luther uh, many, many years ago. Now, The Small Catechism was literally a little book that Luther wrote to help him teach his children the faith. And then he shared that with other parents to help them teach their children the faith. And when it came to these Ten Commandments, Luther wrote these explanations, kind of saying, what's the underlying principle or idea behind this commandment that God wants us to understand? And I love the way he phrased those meanings. There's always a positive and a negative. Here's what we should do, and here's what we shouldn't do as a result of this commandment. Now, when it comes to honoring our parents, this is what Luther said. He said, we should love God so much that when it comes to our parents, we serve them, obey them, love them, and value them. Now, three of those are probably not that surprising to you, uh, that we would love them, that we would obey them. We know we're supposed to obey our parents. We're supposed to do what our parents tell us to do, uh, and that we should value them, that, that, that they should be important to us. But maybe that fourth one, that we're supposed to serve them, is a little bit of a surprise. I, I don't know that we often think as kids that my job is to serve my mom and dad. Certainly, we don't feel that way when we get older, I think. But, uh, but think about this. We say here at Trinity that our job is to help one another, to encourage one another, to look, live, and love more like Jesus, to, to be like Jesus, to be more like Jesus every day. And here's what Jesus said about his mission in life. He said, the Son of Man, that's an Old Testament term he used to describe himself. He said, the Son of Man came not to serve, or not to be served. In other words, he said, I didn't come to be served. I didn't come for people to serve me. He said, but the Son of Man came to serve, to serve others. Now, if we want to be like Jesus, then our job is to live lives of service, to live lives of service to others. And I think as Christians, we get that. But what we forget sometimes is that service starts, first and foremost, God teaches, in the home. It's easy for me to think about you know, going to feed my starving children and, and packing meals for people and serving people that way or, or working at the local food pantry and serving people that way. But when I come home, I think often I feel like, okay, now it's time for me to be served, right? Not according to God. Our, our, our responsibility starts in our homes to serve others, to serve one another. And children, that means that we as, we as kids are called to do what we can to serve our parents. When was the last time, kids, that you looked at mom and dad and said, mom and dad, how can I help? What can I do? Or as adult children, when was the last time we called up mom or dad and said, what do you guys need? How, how can I help you? What can I do to serve you? Now, here's what we shouldn't do, Luther says. We shouldn't look down on our parents. We shouldn't irritate our parents. Now, I remember some times in my life, especially when I was a teenager, where this was really hard for me. <laughs> where I, I think I did look down on my parents. I thought, oh my gosh, my parents are so stupid. <laughs> what are they thinking? Now, you know, Mark Twain famously said that he was amazed that um, by the time he reached his 20s, how much his dad had learned in just a few years. As you get older, we find out maybe our parents weren't so stupid after all, but, but there's this tendency for us to sometimes look down on our parents or, or undervalue our parents. And of course, we all have an ability to irritate our parents, to to treat them in a way that makes them frustrated with us as their kids. Luther says we need to be careful about that because our parents are a gift from God. Now, there is one caveat I want to put in here, and that's this idea that, that honoring or respecting our parents does not necessarily mean we have to agree with them all the time. You see, there's one thing that every parent that has ever lived has in common. Every parent that has ever parented on the face of this earth has this one thing in common, and that is 
they're not perfect. There is no such thing as the perfect parent, at least not here on this earth. Our Heavenly Father is the only one. And, and so we make mistakes as parents. We, um, we, we don't always parent the way we should. We don't always put our kids first, but sometimes we selfishly put ourselves first. Some, sometimes our own baggage in life, our own brokenness in life ends up affecting or hurting our kids. And, and kids, if, if that's the case, where if you're, if you're being hurt in that relationship, you need to get help. Honoring our parents doesn't mean we agree with them. It doesn't mean that everything they do is okay. But it does mean that we still, in the midst of even that brokenness, have responsibility to respect our parents, to value them, to care about them, to love them as God has loved us. Now, by the way, this commandment starts with our parents. But as Luther points out in his explanation, the principle here is one that extends to other people in authority in our lives as well. I remember when I was a kid uh, thinking, I can't wait to be an adult and then no one can tell me what to do. Maybe you felt that way. You know, when you're a kid, your parents are telling you what to do. Your teachers are telling you what to do. Maybe either other adults are telling you what to do. And, uh, and you, you just think, I can't wait to be an adult because then nobody's going to tell me what to do. And then you become an adult and you find out that's not true, right? At work, you have a boss who still tells you what to do. And in this world, we have government authorities that tell us what to do. Like recently when Governor Pritzker said, that's it, don't leave your homes, this is dangerous. We, we get told what to do in some ways our whole lives. There's always someone in authority over us. And, uh, and this commandment extends to those others who are in authority over us in our lives. God wants us to not only honor and respect our parents, to love and serve and obey them, but to do that with our bosses, to do that with, with politicians and, and those in authority over us in the world around us. Now again, remember the caveat. Honoring and respecting does not necessarily mean agreeing with. And by the way, I think if we all understood this, and if we all put this into practice in our lives, our world would be a much better place. I see a lot of people who disagree with those in authority over us, and, and they think that gives them the right to not honor or respect them. It's not what God board, God's word teaches. It, whether it's our boss or whether it's our governor or whether it's our president, we can disagree with them. We can think they're wrong, that they're, that they're not doing the right thing, that they're, that they're mistaken about what's best for us and for our country or for us at work. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't still honor and respect them. There is a way to disagree and do it in a way that is still honoring and respectful. And I think if we all did that, this world would be a much better place. Now, by the way, the word teaches that this commandment, honoring your father and your mother, um, goes both ways. That that honor, just as parents or children are to honor their parents, parents are to honor their children as well. Paul talks about that in Ephesians chapter 6. He's, he's talking to children first. And he says, children, obey your parents. And then he talks about this commandment, honor your father and your mother. He said, children, that's, that's your job. But then he says, parents, and he says fathers, and I, but I believe he includes moms in that as well. He says, I, and I love this translation from Phillips, don't overcorrect your children or make it difficult for them to obey this commandment. In, in other words, parents, we have a responsibility to make sure that we're not lording our authority over our kids, that, uh, that we are respecting our kids too, that, that we're using our authority in their lives to, to help them become better people and to learn and to grow, but not to force them to serve us or uh, to force them into some mold that, that we've decided they have to follow. And by doing so, when we do that, we make it tough for them to honor us. We make it tough for them to respect us, Paul says. And, and then he goes on to say this. He says, because ultimately the goal, parents, for our children is that they would, we would bring them up in the training and the instruction of the Lord. Now, I, I'm blessed to have a son, and uh, I, I want a lot for my son. I want him to be successful in life. I want him to be happy in life. I want him to have great relationships in life. I want him to feel fulfilled in life. I want him to... To, to feel like he's making a difference in this world. But above all that, first and foremost, my dream for my son, my desire for him is that he would know the Lord, that, that he would have a relationship with Jesus. 
and, uh, and his parents, that, that should be our first priority. Now, eventually, our, our kids are gonna make their own decision about who it is they believe in and what they believe in. And, and ultimately, their relationship with their Lord is in their hands. But as parents, it's our job to do our best to put them in that position. Now, if you're a parent whose son or daughter right now has turned away from the Lord, I, I wanna give you some encouragement. I want you to know that first of all, you never give up on them. You keep praying for them. You keep doing all you can. I, I want you to know this, that God's word teaches that our heavenly father loves our kids even more than we do. It's hard to believe, isn't it? But, but God's love for them is free and full and complete and perfect. And he is gonna do everything he can in their lives uh, to be at work in their lives and to draw them closer to him. Parents, the best thing we can do for our kids is do all we can to give them uh, that, that uh, training and instruction of the Lord to help them come to know about a God that loves them. One last bit of advice for you as parents as you seek to honor your kids just as they honor you. A good friend of mine who's a pastor who has studied God's word on this subject a lot, he says it this way, and I think there's a lot of wisdom here. He says, dads, the best thing you can do for your kids is let them know that you're proud of them. And moms, the best thing you can do for your kids is to, to let them know that you love them. And, and he says, don't just, don't just show them that, you, uh, that you're proud of them. Don't just show them that you love them tell them. They need to hear those words. They need to hear you say, I'm proud of you. They need to hear you say, I love you. And, and by the way, I asked him once, I said, does that mean moms don't need to tell their kids they're proud or dads shouldn't tell them they love? And he says, no, no, no he didn't mean that. Uh, of course, that it goes both ways there. Parents, let your kids know that you love them and that you're proud of them. It will make all the difference in the world in their lives. Folks, in this commandment, God has given us this beautiful picture of a family where, where moms and dads um, use the authority that God has given them to help their children come to know the Lord and be all that they can be, and where children recognize that parents are a gift from God. And even if they don't always agree with them or don't always, uh, even if parents aren't always perfect in how they parent, those children love their mom and dad and obey their mom and dad and, and seek to, to serve their mom and dad, and by doing so, value the gift that God has given them. The family is a gift from God, and this commandment helps us understand how we can use that gift um, for the best blessing in our lives. Amen. Well, having heard those words of God from Scripture, we want to turn our hearts now to prayer, knowing that our God is indeed our Father, that He loves us, and that He hears the prayers that we bring before Him. At the end of each petition, we're going to end with the words, Lord, in your mercy, to which you are invited to respond, hear our prayer. Let's pray together. Merciful Lord, hear the prayers of your people and grant to us grace sufficient for our needs and all those for whom we pray. Remembering that all authority comes from you, grant that we may faithfully serve, honor, and humbly obey all those you have placed over us. Forgive our self-serving attitudes of selfishness, pride, and rebellion. Replace them with a loving graciousness that helps us see others the way you do, as precious treasures, worthy of tender care and respect. In all we say and do, we want to honor you, for you are great and most worthy of praise. You are to be feared above all gods. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord and giver of life, look with kindness upon all parents. Let them ever rejoice in the gift you have given them. Enable them to be teachers and examples of righteousness for their children, bringing them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. May they be godly leaders in their home where honor and respect are modeled and grace and forgiveness abound. Strengthen them in their own baptism that they may share eternally with their children the salvation you have given them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, your son grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and all people. Bless, guide, and govern the children and young people of your church by your Holy Spirit, that they may grow in grace and in the knowledge of your word. Fill them with the desire to obey your commands and to honor those in authority. 
with their whole heart out of respect for you. Protect and defend them from all danger and harm, giving your holy angels charge over them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, on this Independence Day weekend, we rejoice in the freedoms you have given us as citizens in this country. Grant that we remember your generosity and constantly do your will. Bless our land with honest industry, truthful education, and an honorable way of life. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil course of action. Grant that we, who come from many nations with many different languages, may become a united people. Support us in the defending of the liberties of all, and give those to whom we have entrusted the authority of government the spirit of wisdom, that there may be justice and peace in our land. When times are prosperous, may our hearts be thankful, and in troubled times do not let our trust in you fail. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, by your Holy Spirit, lead us to be a people whose God is the Lord. Teach us to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with our God. Grant us wisdom to discern where and how you would have us speak boldly for the cause of justice. Act courageously in defense of the weak and respectfully hold all in authority accountable to your will so that the world may see you in us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. As we draw our prayers to a close, we want to close using the words that Jesus himself has taught us to pray, the words of the Lord's Prayer. But we want to do so in a slightly different way this weekend. You see, we remember that these words taught to us by Jesus have been spoken by believers down through the centuries in a variety of different languages and in a variety of different cultures. And so what we want to do this, uh, this weekend is we actually want to sing the Lord's Prayer using a tune that was developed by a Mexican-American hymn writer. We're going to hear the refrain sung first in Spanish, and then we're invited into singing the Lord's Prayer, singing the refrain in English. So join us in an attitude of prayer as we now sing the Lord's Prayer together.
Well, as our service comes to a close, we just want to make a couple of announcements. First is this. Again, if you are new and worshiping with us for the first time, we want to invite you to connect with us. You'll notice in the chat bar that a little button has popped up inviting you to connect with us, and you can follow that link to our digital connect card. Tell us a little bit about yourself, how you heard about us, and uh, how we can help you better get connected to what's going on here at Trinity. Likewise, we want to gather our offering. You see, we take seriously what Jesus says. He says that where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And we believe that he put them in that order for that reason. Because I find that when I give to the mission of God, it actually shapes my heart around that mission. So you'll notice a little link has popped up in the chat bar inviting you to give. And you can make an online gift for, uh, for the first time, or you can set up recurring giving. Or maybe you're already giving online or you're mailing in your gifts to our office. And if you're doing so, I just want to say thank you for your generosity. It allows us to continue to do the ministry that God has called us to do. And it allows us to support our missions partners around the world. So thank you for your generosity. We really only have one announcement for you this weekend, and that is to remind you that starting next weekend, all four of our locations are going to have outdoor in-person worship services. These are gonna be hosted twice a month in July and August. They're gonna be uh, taking place at different times, so make sure that you're paying attention to our website or looking for the e-news to find out when that worship service is happening at your location. But we also wanna let you know that online worship will also happen at 5 p.m. on Saturday and at 8.30 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. on Sunday morning. So whether you're gathered together with us in person or you're gathered online, we look forward to seeing you next weekend. Well, we want to uh, transition now to our final hymn, inviting you to sing with us, Go My Children with My Blessing. Let's sing together.
Children of God, go now in God's peace. Remember that you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's very own possession, so that you can show others the goodness of God, for he has called you out of the darkness and into his wonderful light. Amen. Go in peace, everyone, and have a great week. Hey Trinity family, next weekend, July 12th is a special day because we are beginning outdoor worship at all four of our sites. Let's let you hear more from each one of our site pastors. Hey Trinity, Pastor Dave, I'm standing where we're gonna be for our outdoor service at the Lovett Field, just on the same block as the church. You maybe are noticing the church building right here and the school building. We're gonna be in this beautiful shaded area, appropriately distanced and excited to worship together. That's going to be 10:30 in the morning on Sunday, July 12th. If you're in Chicago, come check us out. Hey everyone, this is Pastor Tony coming to you from Green Trails, and I'm looking out at this empty parking lot, envisioning what next Sunday will look like when we hold our first outdoor service here on the 12th. You know, it's been four months since we gathered at this site, and I am so looking forward to seeing your faces. Next week when you gather, make sure that you look at the guidelines that came out in the newsletter this week and it'll come out again next week. Uh, bring your sunblock and this week, if you would, pray for that service. Pray for good weather and I look forward to seeing you all next week. God's blessings. Hey everyone, Pastor Nick here and services at Kimberly Way are going to be right here in our south parking lot at 9 a.m. We look forward to seeing you there. On Friday, June 26, Illinois went into phase four, which means a lot of the park districts in the area are now opening up shelters like the one behind me for rent. So South Naperville has secured this shelter at 83rd and Book Road. It's right across the street from Springbrook Golf Course. So we are so excited to be back together again in person, worshiping God outdoors and celebrating all he's done for us. Okay, here are a few things for you to remember. First of all, bring your own lawn chairs. We're not gonna have seating available, so you're gonna bring your own chairs and use those. Second of all, bring your mask. We're gonna ask you to wear those when you get in and out of your car, when you're heading to and from your seating place. Once you're safely seated, socially distanced, you can take your masks off for worship, but we'd like you to wear them before and after that time. And finally, if you have kids, they're gonna stay with you during the whole service, but we will have some activity pages available for them. Bring your own crayons and things like that so they are ready to participate in the service that way as well. Hey, can't wait to see you all next weekend, July 12th.